Hello, uh, welcome to Real Person Reviews. Uh, my name is Sam, and I'm a real person. And today I want to talk to you about Lego Star Wars, the complete saga for Nintendo Wii. And there's uh, some stuff up front, I guess. Um, this is really the first, like, uh, console Lego game I've played, and the first one I've reviewed. Um, and, like, I have played... Uh, Lego Star Wars 2, the original trilogy, years ago, before I ever reviewed games or anything, I played it on Game Boy Advance, so I'm assuming that's probably a little different, I don't remember tons of that, so that's maybe not the most helpful thing to bring up, but in, just in case there's any doubt, I have actually played, I guess, technically one of these games before, um, but I don't know how it's gonna, you know up to like a console one or anything and it's been so long i don't know that i can really pull up any real memories from that so if there's anything that gets you know connected with those dots it's a subconscious thing i, I assure you um and uh there's a written review you can check out before or after or instead of this review um, i'm gonna link that in the description probably uh and uh i guess i'm also just gonna preface this with with, with that uh, i'm gonna kind of assume you already know about Star Wars, the the main movies of Star Wars, and 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 um, mostly mostly the first uh, six ones, as those were um, all that were out really at the time this came out. So that's what they mean by the complete saga. They mean the six. Um, it's a it's an older game, obviously, and uh, also I'm going to assume you know what Legos are. Um, because that's a lot of legwork for me to do for a review about this game. But, uh, you know, if you want to you get a lot of the details, um, I'm probably going to gloss over a couple things here. We'll see how it goes. But uh, I, I try to get into some pretty good detail as much as I needed to in the written review. So very much recommended you check that out if uh, you want even more details. Uh, I think that'll do it. I think that'll do it for the start. So, Lego Star Wars A Complete Saga is essentially uh, a 3D platformer collect-a-thon game where you play through the Star Wars movies with all the characters and much of the set pieces and everything characterized as uh, Legos. Um, uh, when you start off the game, you go and you can like, pick levels and you start off and it's like... Um, you can only do the first level of Episode One: The Phantom Menace. Um, every every movie um, has six levels, um, so split into six chapters, uh, and uh, you have to start with that first one. Once you beat the first level, you can actually you unlock the first chapter of every other episode plus the second one of that of the first episode. So you know you can kind of progress from there yourself to kind of go in order. Um, when you first play a level, you have to play uh, the story mode, and you beat that, you unlock free play mode and challenge mode. Um, and uh, beating all the levels uh, in uh, uh, an episode will unlock a few bonus missions for you to do um, in that episode. And uh, when you're playing, most of these levels, you're just running around as these characters. They're, they're for the story mode that you have to do first to unlock this stuff. Um, you... You play as the appropriate characters in the, um, you know, for the scene in the movie and whatever. Um, usually you're playing as the good guys, uh, and there's usually always at least two characters out there for you to switch between, um, I guess, or possibly play co-op. I didn't play any co-op or multiplayer. I didn't have anyone to play with, so those things I'm not really going to talk about, but I think that was the reasoning, so you could play everything like co-op um, if you wanted. Um... As far as general characters, like there's, there's like there's different types of characters, and some have like you know multiple like quirks and abilities about them, but generally have things like Jedi characters who can do double jumps, use the Force on certain objects, uh, and the wield lightsabers. You have characters that have uh, blasters. You have some characters are short, so they can go through doors that nobody else can get through. Um, you have like droids uh, can open up certain panels and certain types of characters can activate certain objects or interact with certain things essentially is the idea and as you play it's pretty you'll you'll latch onto it pretty quickly as you go 
Um, the icons are pretty simplified to see what kind of character you need, so you might play around with some characters a bit and be like, is this this kind of character that can do these things? As it might not be super apparent just by looking at them or by their names. But uh, after playing around with a bit of experimentation and um, a little bit of trial and error, you know, you'll eventually figure out what kind of character all these different characters are. Um, and the abilities that they have. Uh, and you'll need a lot of those to, you know, use the different ones in different orders and whatnot to get through the levels or find secrets. Um, as you go through, there's a lot of things for you to interact with and blow up and whatever. Um, as you're fighting against enemies and stuff, trying to go through and do the the main plot stuff, there's usually a little, some cutscenes thrown in there too. Silas is Legos, of course. And simplified because there's no, like, dialogue or anything. The most you get for actual story stuff is the opening crawl before you play a level and then there's just some cutscenes during there to kind of show some of the action that you don't necessarily need to play through and then to things to kind of tie together actual scenes from the movies in that style uh, and generally everyone ends with a little clip like that too um, to end the scene um, a lot of the stuff you can like uh, blow up and, and interact with will net you these uh, Lego studs, which are used like uh, a currency in the game. And as you collect them, um, a meter will fill up. If you die, um, you will actually lose some of those too. But if you fill up this meter, it's this true Jedi meter. If you fill it all the way up, it'll give you the, the rank of true Jedi, and then you'll see the meter flashing. And then, then if you die, you don't, you don't go back under for that. So you'll be good until the end of the level. Um, there are also these mini kits, 10 mini kits in each level to find. These little collectibles that you can find in certain places. Some of them are kind of hidden and out of the way. Some of them you do uh, specific um, actions or interact with certain things in order to make them appear. Um, and uh, you can collect those also. Um, generally, you can't collect all 10 mini kits the first time through in the story mode because you need characters that you can't use during the story mode. Um, but you go through, uh, you... you uh, uh, once you beat the, the, the level, then you get um, a gold brick for beating the level, which are like the main sense of progression, main thing you get for to show your progress. If you get the true Jedi meter filled up, you get a gold brick for that. And if you get all ten mini kits, you get a gold brick for that. Um, and then once you collect, stay collected, so there's at least that. So when you go back, you go back in um, and you unlock free play mode now, so you can go back in during free play. And during that, the difference is that you can pick whichever character you want from the characters you currently have unlocked. Plus, it'll give you kind of like this this, this handful of other characters. Like your your secondary character also will be de determined on what your player two you know following character is. Um, and the rest of them it kind of auto generates from the pool of uh, of characters you have unlocked, and it tries to automatically generate characters you you um, will need the different you know types of characters so you can do all of the things if possible um, and then when you're playing uh, on the fly you can hit one or two and cycle through them on the spot um, so you don't have to actually switch to them you just actually become them by cycling through on those buttons um, which changes up kind of how you explore and do things in the level on free play and allows you to get to those areas and collect the rest of the mini kits and whatnot. There's also a power brick hidden in each level and if you find that, usually that's harder to get or harder just to find and if you get that, you'll unlock uh, a corresponding extra in the cantina. Um, and so let's talk about that for a second. The cantina also has a place where you can buy things. There's a place where you can customize characters at some point too. Um, uh, and so I mean, that's uh, just a thing to make your own characters to play as for like free play mode. Um, but in the cantina, there's a shop. And you can buy some things from there. There's hints you can buy, which are just pretty self-explanatory. Um, there are gold bricks you can buy. And I don't know if it's just from time played or from actually making progress. But as you go along, more and more of those will be available. So you can just buy some extra gold bricks from there. Um, and they become more expensive as well. Um, again, using Le Lego studs as your currency. Uh, and there are characters, which after you beat a level, you usually unlock a few characters. Generally, the ones you actually just played as, you will unlock those as characters you can select from. Um, but also then the other characters you encounter during there that aren't necessarily characters you played as, um, those will usually start to unlock as you encounter them for the first time in the shop and then be available for purchase. You can then have them added to your character selection as well. Um, and... Uh, there are extras you can buy in the 
in the shop. Some of them are just general ones you can buy right up front. Most of them, uh, especially the really most of these are, are the ones you have to unlock by getting the corresponding power bricks. They're all actually pretty helpful. They're generally supposed to be like aside from maybe situationally, they're all generally helpful to you. Um, it's just that you have to find the power brick and get it and then you have to go to the shop and then actually buy the extra and then you can go to the extras menu when you pause and then toggle things on and off as you see fit um, so there's there's that as the main uh, stuff you're doing and that's probably where you spend most of your studs you're getting those um, uh, the other thing that happens is that you've got uh, the the challenge mode in the main levels um, and that mode's a little different in that you actually can't use your extras in there. The extras are, are turned off for this. Um, so you're given a time limit of 10 minutes, and you have to go in and collect 10 blue mini kits within that time. You can still pick from your characters like from free play, but no extras, and it's time limit. And these blue mini kits are all put in places that are generally mostly just out of the way. Most of them you don't have to unlock or like f do much to find them necessarily to uncover them. Most of them are usually out somewhat in plain sight if you're looking and keeping an eye out for them but you have to collect all 10 of them within 10 minutes um and uh, if you fail you have to start over and collect all 10 of them again and try to beat that time limit and if you do that um it just goes towards completion percentage um but you also um yeah i mean i think that's pretty much all it does actually i think it might just be for completion percentage purposes um also, there are some vehicle levels as well. I think every episode, pretty much every episode has at least, um, at least like one vehicle level and one like boss level. Which like a boss level usually just has like, there's a boss fight somewhere in there, and they'll have uh, you know maybe a few phases or something for fighting them. We're still using a lot of mechanics here to kind of understand. It's just that they have health bars that they have to do, and like the way you fight them, you know, it, it depends. It's not too different, um, but the vehicle levels are really only different. So much so in the sense that, um, replace the idea of characters with vehicles. Most of the vehicles do very similar things. I think a few vehicles, like, can, can use tow cables. Some vehicles, uh, can use torpedoes. Um, and some vehicles don't even fire. Um, some vehicles, like, are kind of grounded and, you know, have to be on the ground. Some vehicles can be up in the air. Um, and they have different speeds and handlings for some of them. So, like, there's some, some differences there. Um, the only one that really matters that much is... The only time you need a specific kind is that there's the tie class uh, fighters or whatever vehicles, and you need those to open up certain doors at some of those levels. That's pretty much the only one that really has something unique. Um, that that um, that the level really spells out for you, um, I guess. So uh, there's that. But otherwise, they play pretty much in a similar style. You know, whether it's more of an automatically scrolling forward thing or if it's more of a free flying thing. It's kind of the same concepts, anyways. Um, and, uh, again, like free pin mode lets you play as any of the unlocked vehicles for doing that and everything, so that's all. It's all the same kind of concept, it's just with vehicles. Um, for the bonus levels of each episode, you've got, um, first one is Super Story, um, which has you, um, once again, unable to use any of your extras. Um, and you're playing through basically just a marathon of all six levels in the episode. Uh, and you don't really get anything for doing it other than, like, I mean, like, the goal for that is really just to see if you can beat the the high scores or whatever, which defaults for all of them. The default is uh, one hour of gameplay, so you're trying to see how fast you can do it, and a million studs, I believe, is what it is, or 100,000? Oh, is it 100,000 or if it's a million? Something, something like that. So you gotta beat, basically, you're trying to beat the, you're trying to beat the, 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 the high score uh of those two things but whether you beat it or not it doesn't matter as long as you get through the whole thing and finish you uh will get some of your completion percentage so that's really all that matters as far as actually you know, completion and then there are two other battles uh or two other missions um which are both kind of the same concept um there's a character there's the character mission where um it's called character bonus actually i think this was called specifically i have to look at the text whatever but like there's character bonus, which has you playing as, you know, whatever characters from free to play. Um, they put you into, like, some arena area uh, based on the actual uh, levels. And you have to run around there, and you have an increased, I th believe it's an increased value for most of the studs you're collecting. But the idea is to collect one million studs. 
and um, w within five minutes. Um, you can also grab these power-ups that help increase, uh, help like suck in the studs. Again, there's no extras for the, any of these. Um, so like I, th I think there are some extras you just prohibited from using certain ones like the stud magnet or the multipliers or whatever. Sort of ones that would just make it easier for you to get those. Um, I think are disabled. Uh, but like uh, a lot of times, like beating enemies will make them drop studs. There's lots of purple studs everywhere. You get the power up, and it helps draw them in and increases their value even further. And so the idea is to try and get a million studs within the time limit. Um, and the uh, mini kit bonus is pretty much the same thing, except that you're playing as a vehicle. But you have to play as one of the vehicles you've actually finished via getting a full set of mini kits. So whenever you get ten mini kits in a level, that unlocks a vehicle. For, for here, and um, I mean, you have to at least have one level fully completed uh, uh, mini kits before you can actually do any of the uh, mini kit bonus levels. Um, but it's, but it's you know, same exact same concept, just with vehicles. Um, and each of these will get you a gold brick for completing them. Um, then there's also uh, these general bonus levels you can do. Um, I don't know if you actually unlock those by beating all of the other episodes or what, or when exactly they become unlocked. I think that maybe they're unlocked earlier and you just need so many gold bricks to do it. I'm not, I don't know for sure. I'm not entirely certain on that, so don't quote me. I, I basically waited to do that until after everything else, so I didn't keep tabs on that. Um, and in these, uh, you, uh, I believe you also can't use your extras in these either. Um, but they're just, you know, these big, like, extra levels. Maybe you can, I don't remember. But yeah, these big like extra levels and um Okay, maybe you can't use the extras in those levels, yeah. But there there's yeah, there's just these bonus ones you can do. Um I don't really want to spoil what those are because they're supposed to be bonuses. You just need to have enough gold bricks to build up the little doors to go into them and actually access them. And then um beyond that, if that's not enough for you, there's also um these bounty hunter missions you can unlock. Uh, if you go outside of the cantina and you go into um, this little door with Jabba the Hutt's face on it, you can do these bounty hunter missions with basically, um, in each mission you play as this clump of bounty hunters. You can switch between all the bounty hunter characters in the game. And then you can, like, uh, you're going around these levels. Usually they're just, like, shorter, you know, shortened versions of these, these levels uh, that you've already played on. And you're trying to go after whoever that target is. You just have to basically find where they are in the level. When you're close by them, they have this little like character icon on the bottom of the screen. They'll kind of keep flashing, so you'll know that you're close. And once you find them, all you have to do is go and touch them. You don't actually have to fight them or anything. You just have to go find them and then touch them. And it's like, I think it's within something like two or three minutes or something like that. You don't have a whole lot of time to go and do this. Um, so you're trying to go and find them. And again, I don't, I don't think you can use extras in, the, in, this, uh, in, in these missions either. Um, but like... Yeah, like this, essentially what it is is for all those are just short little things. Like, go find the character and touch them things while you're playing as the bounty hunters. Um, and, uh, you know, then you can get all the bricks. So once you get all the gold bricks and the power bricks and the... And, the, and once you play all of the things, you'll get 100%. And you don't even have to do the dueling hall or whatever the hell it is for, for the strictly multiplayer mode. And I can't talk about that because I didn't have anybody to play with, so that's... That's all I have to say about that. And that's a lot of stuff um, to mention. And that's me leaving out some details. That's a lot of stuff going on. But also, um, when you're actually playing, it's a lot simpler than that. It's just that there's so many things to explain. Um, that just so I don't miss these things, you know, so you'll know about them. Once you play a lot of these things, you'll be like, okay, I understand it. It's second nature kind of stuff. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, but I just wanted you guys to really be with it on what's going on here um and i liked a lot of this game too like i i think a lot of this works pretty well um the lego style is great because it's like there's something really charming about like seeing little like uh little lego uh people and like just seeing actual like you know things made out of legos and actually seeing like these lego pieces that i remember like playing with and using you know as a kid and whatever like Seeing those actually used and making it look like they are made out of real Legos is like something that's just very like satisfying and like relatable about that. I think that uh, goes a long way um, for selling uh, on the you know selling me on the idea and the charm of Legos. 
um, some of the simplified stories and things and the way they use Lego logic of like, this is how you would represent these things in Legos, I think is also like really nice. Um, I enjoyed a lot of that. Uh, as I as I was playing, like uh, I'll do one mild spoiler, I guess. Um, um, I won't say who, I won't say who or when or whatever, but somebody gets cut in half, and it's funny to see that represented as, uh, re you know, disconnecting uh, a Lego dude's body from Lego dude legs or whatever. It just like separate those two pieces, and it's like. That's really funny that that's how they decided to do that. Like, I don't know, I like that. Some of the stuff they try to, try to play up the humor, some of the stuff they try to simplify it to make it understandable when they're not having dialogue or anything happening. Um, you're not going to get as much, uh, you know, of, of the story as you're going to get from actually watching the movies, but I don't know. I think plot-wise also, like the movies and stuff, like... Like, you like the plot stuff and, like, just things that are happening and the, and the music, like, you'd be like, that stuff's cool. But, again, that's... Not really this game doing it so much as the movies. Um, so credit kind of goes towards the already existing source material for that stuff. Um, but yeah, the collectathon element is great. I really like going around and like trying to find all these little secrets and like c collect things and um, the idea of like going around and finding, you know, re-exploring these levels to find out where they hid the blue mini kits for the challenge missions was cool. Um, and like. A lot of the just like the the visual is very colorful. The sound effects, a lot of it's very clicky, like Lego clicky, and it's just it's a lot of the game is very polished and like satisfying. And again, the Lego style works well with its age because it's like this is a Wii game, but you might kind of forget that it's a Wii game every now and then because you're just you know you're just playing, uh, you're just playing, uh, like uh, you're just playing a Lego game, and so you know, it's like it doesn't need to look amazing for you to be sold on the whole Lego thing. Um, it still doesn't really look all that dated or anything. Um, although I guess the fact that it says the complete saga and there's only six movies kind of inherently dates it, but you know what I mean. Um, and, uh, it's got a lot of content, too. There's just, just, a, just a ton of things to do, um, with all the playing these levels and, like, the getting all the gold bricks and doing all that. It's like, there's, there's definitely a lot of bang for your buck in here, and I think that's a good thing. But it does kind of lean into the repetition when you realize that every level you pretty much have to play about four times. If you're going to go for 100% completion anyways, you're going to play the story mode, then you got to play the free play mode to get all the rest of the mini kits you didn't find in, in the story mode, and then play it in challenge mode to get all of the blue mini kits or whatever for that, and then play it again for the super story mode. Um, you're also replaying some of the levels with, um, you know... Because you're doing it for some of these other little missions too, and like the the, the revamped, uh, like oh yeah, the character missions sometimes are just in places you've been, and the the, the bounty hunter missions are in places you've been, and like it gets to a point where it's like okay, like I get it, I, I mean I get it, and it's just annoying. <laughs> it gets a little tiresome and tedious after a while for some of that, and it's just for completion percentage. So in that regard, it's maybe better to play with a friend or you know. Uh, to play it in bursts rather than binge playing it because that'll really I think that'll really hurt you and Then it's also kind of obnoxious you can't use your extras in some of these things like I get that the challenge missions you're not supposed to use your extras because they want them to be challenging why can't you use them in the super story mode if you can use them in the regular story why can't you use it in super story and also uh, I don't know like I just, I just feel like that would have been like the perfect place for it because by the time you're doing super stories you might already have a lot more unlocked to do I like that the the extras aren't like cheats I guess because like you have to find them and earn them like, you, you, you find them, and then you have to buy them, so you feel like you earn them rather than putting in a code or something. But also, it's kind of annoying that, like, you know, sometimes then you just can't use them after you've already taken all this trouble to actually get them. Then again, some of them are so overpowered that they make the game so easy. And then you get this weird disconnect of, like, it's really easy when you have these extras on, and granted, they're optional, but after you've earned some of these extras, why would you not turn them on other than to artificially challenge yourself? But at the same time, then you go into, like, the challenge missions, and some of these challenge missions are really fucking hard. Uh, like, in comparison, it's a huge, steep uh, jump in difficulty, because it's like... It's like, uh... I don't know, it's, it's just like, uh, it came from being, like, you know, 
you know, nobody can really even do jack shit to me most of the time, to everything is killing me and I only have so much time to get these fucking blue mini kits and, like, I, I don't want to be under a time limit to go and try to explore these levels. It makes me not want to, you know, take my time and really explore and get familiar with these levels, even more familiar with them because I'll be playing them for probably the third time now, at, at minimum, the third time now, most likely. Um... Uh, but no, now I gotta have this time limit, so I'm more like trying to rush through and hoping I see them as like go. Otherwise, if I have to stop and look, then I'm already probably gonna take too long and I won't be able to complete it even if I do eventually find the one I missed around this area. So that came really frustrating, um, and oh, there was just, it's just, and it's just, it's, it's weird for the, cause this is a game for kids, and a few of those challenge missions, I, I felt like, like, it was just r really hard in the sense that, like, I, w I was looking at a guide for a few of those and still wasn't fast enough to get all of the things. You don't really have a whole lot of room for error, and that's not a good thing to have. I mean, granted, it's only just for completion percentage, so a lot of people might just be like, fuck it, I don't care, I don't want to do that. But it is kind of rough to see, like, you don't have full completion and knowing exactly, like, this is why these some of these challenge missions are just really hard. And um, other than that, there's just some, some bugs in the game and glitches that are like... Yeah, there's little things that aren't like that big of a deal, but like there are some... Some of them I, th I think maybe shouldn't have gone through playtesting that way. Um, especially since this is like a re-release of like, you know... I'm pretty sure there was like LEGO Star Wars and LEGO Star Wars 2. And this is just both of those combined to have all the best levels and I like, kind of redesign some of it and make it work better together. But... Um, you know... There are a couple levels I've done where I got stuck and I couldn't get back. One of them I remember was my fault, but there was one where like I just had to like build a thing to progress. And of all the things in the room to build, one of the things was missing. It just like either it, it disappeared or it never spawned in the first place because like it just wasn't there. No matter how much I looked around the room, and I couldn't I couldn't build the thing to progress, and that's annoying. Um, another one I had it happened multiple times. I'm not exactly sure if I've pinned down what happened. But it's either because I did things out of sequence or because of just some really finicky physics of pushing a, a block and I didn't push it just right and so it didn't work. But I had a couple times, yeah, where it just fucked up my entire run because those things just weren't working. And I feel like those really should have been fixed. Those were pretty big ones. And some of the smaller ones are also, I think, magnified a little bit just in the sense that, I mean, yeah, they're kind of like, I understood what happened. It makes sense to me. But I'm also someone who's been playing games for a long time at this point and... <laughs> Uh, I'm not, you know, probably the intended target audience for this necessarily, so uh, just like some kid who's playing this who hasn't played tons of games and has the knowledge of, of what it might be beyond, you know, just them playing in a game world, it might be extra frustrating for some of these, like, weird glitchy, buggy things to happen. Uh, so there's definitely, definitely a few kinks, I think, to, to work out here. Then again, you can see I got a Lego Star Wars: The Complete Saga for five dollars uh, at uh, at a I got it at a pawn shop. So, um, you know, I'm mostly glad it even works. That's a lot of content for five bucks, and I think it's worth five bucks. Maybe, maybe even you know ten or fifteen bucks, depending on if you're a fan of like the 3D platformer collectathon, or a fan of Star Wars, or a fan of Legos, uh, or any combination of those. I think this is a good one to check out. Um, and, uh, like, I mean, I don't know, it's just, it's just good, simple fun. It's not going to crack your top games list. It's not going to be one of those games where, like, this is amazing, you have to play it. But it's, uh, it's satisfying, it's charming, um, and it's, uh, it's, you know, harkens to his, back to this genre that I think is underrepresented, it's underappreciated, and, uh, I, I, it's, I don't know, it's, it's, it's good, I think, uh, I think uh, I think you should check it out if you get the chance. And there's probably other ones you can check out that are comparable. Um, as for recommendations or whatever and things for you to do in the comments, if you'd like, um, tell me some of the other LEGO games that are good. Like, other other good LEGO Star Wars games, are they as good or better than this? Um, and are other LEGO games as good or better than this one? Like, I'd like to hear some opinions and stuff and possibly do more of these if there's other really good ones but uh we'll see and uh, i guess we'll see if it ever turns into you know a a uh another complete saga with actually the, the next trilogy of movies we'll see we'll see what happens
Also, for some reason, they all have this weird, like, yellow, like, end thing. I think the the Force Unleashed had this, too, I think. I don't know why Star Wars games did that, just so they would stick out, I guess? I don't know. That's a little tacky.